creating alert, loading, and authentication services. In this section, we're going to take a look at creating alert notifications, building the loading indicator service, setting up the authentication service, connecting the login and sign up pages to the auth service, and protecting our routes with an authentication guard. Creating an alert notification service. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating an alert service, generating an alert class, and alert type enum. So in this video, we need to go ahead and create a alert or an alert uh, that'll display up top on the page. So if your server's not running, go ahead and run ng-serve in the terminal. And before we get started though, we have a small problem. First of all, these pictures, they seem a little too big. And also, uh, when the page first renders, sometimes they're kind of squished. So I believe that to be because these images are coming from an external source and we set the width of the image to be set, but if the image isn't present yet when it renders, so you see this one probably renders, this one maybe partially renders, and this one doesn't get time to render in time, or get to fetch the image in time. So let's go ahead and quickly fix that. So if you go into your chatroomwindow.component.ts and you'll see here we had all our images, we said 150 pixels. I'm gonna use Command D, it's probably Control D in Windows, and I'm just gonna keep hitting Command D until I selected all of those. I'll just type 50, change the size there, then open up chat message.component.html. Instead of us just rendering the straight up image and setting the size of that, let's go ahead and create a div here. We'll call it image wrapper. We'll cut that. Perfect. We'll save that. So now we have an image wrapper around our image. So it's a div that we can set a hard size. So let's set image wrapper here. Now image wrapper will be set and it'll have a fixed size and then the content can render inside. So let's save that. And it looks like we missed one thing. I need to change these to 50 pixels. So that way it matches. Now it should refresh. And perfect. So now our image size is a little smaller, not taking up so much room, and they're all rendering on initial page load to the correct size. So let's go ahead and switch over to our command line here. And what we need to do first is generate an enum. So we're going to have an alert that'll display up top and it will be either success or danger. So let's go ahead and generate that enum. So ngg, enum is the type, put it in our enums folder and we'll call it alert type. Great, let's go ahead and generate a class too. So that'll generate our class and also let's just go ahead and generate a service. Generate service, services folder and we'll call it the alert service. Great. So ng serve to start our server again. Now let's open up with command P or control P if you're on Windows. Let's go to the enum. So we have the alert type enum. So here what we want to do is we want to set success equals success and danger. So success and danger are kind of a bootstrap thing where success, success will be a green color and danger will be a red color. We'll set danger to lowercase danger. This is kind of define constants essentially for us. Now if we open up our alert file and our classes. From here, let's go ahead and import our alert type. Smart, import it for us. So our alerts will have text, which will be a string, and they will have a type, which you got it, is an alert type. Now let's create the constructor, which will take text and a type. And we wanna set a default. If they do not pass a type, it should be alert type. You'll see how we use our enum here, dot, and it has it right there. So that way if no type is passed, it will default to alert.success, which will output a string success. So that way it makes it a little more clear when you're using them. That way there's no typos or anything like that. Very helpful. So we'll say this.text equals our text and this.type equals type. Perfect. Now let's open up our service, command P, alert.service. And in here, you need to import subject and we'll get that from the rxjs library. And now we can create a new subject which we can publish on and subscribe to. So that way, anytime a new alert comes in, we can go ahead and render it on the page. So it'll be public. Say so alerts is a type subject and the subject type is an alert, which it looks like you can't find alerts. So let's go ahead and import it. So now that should be good to go. So now in order to get an alert to publish, kind of like right in this area here, let's say we're on the login page, you want a little alert to pop up if they 
put in the wrong login information. So we're going to do that in our app component since that is our root component. Let's open up app.component.ts. And here, let's go ahead and delete this. That was the default generated when we did uh, Angular CLI. So we'll do public alerts is an array of alerts. We'll initialize it to an empty array. And of course, you can't find alert. So we need to import. And there, we found it. Now what we need is we also need constructor connect to the alert service. Constructor will be a private called alert service, which is of type alert service. And that auto imported for us. And we don't need to do anything there. Then on init, we want to subscribe to alerts. So ng on init, we'll say this.alert service dot alerts, which is the subject. And we want to subscribe to it. And a new alert comes in. We will push the alert onto the array. Actually, let's go ahead and just set this to a single item. Call it alert. No, we'll leave that. Call it alert. Now let's open up our app.component.html. And here, I'm going to insert above the router outlet. I'll do a div with the class of alert wrapper. Now we want to render an alert, uh, which actually we need to go get from NGX Bootstrap. So alert, we'll just iterate over our alerts. So we'll say let alert of alerts. And we'll say type equals alert.type. So that'll be success or danger. And then there's a property we can call dismiss on timeout, which will be equal to 5,000, which is 5,000 milliseconds. And we'll give this alert a class text center, which will be the bootstrap text center. So it'll center our text for us. And inside we want to render the alert text. So we'll say alert.text, save that. And we'll quickly just add some styling. So we open up alert.scss, I mean app.component.scss. And let's import from our variables. And then we'll target our alert wrapper and we'll make position relative. And the alert itself, we want to position it absolute on the page. We'll say top, we'll make a variable here called navbar height. And we'll say width 100%. That way it'll stretch across the page. Great. Now let's open up our app.module. So we need to import a couple things here. So here you saw we in imported from NGX. There's a bootstrap dropdown module, which we're not currently using. So we can get rid of that. But we want to import something else, which will be the alert module. And that'll be from NGX bootstrap. We can come down here, which I'll just change this here, called alert module. We'll say for root. And we also need to import our alert service. So let me go up here. Actually, let's clean this up and we'll say components. And we'll say services. Let's go ahead and import our alert service. Import it up there. We'll just cut that out. We can paste it down below. Now we need to include it as a provider. Perfect. And it looks like we still need to resolve the navbar height. So let's go ahead and open up our variables and we'll make a new property here called navbar height. We'll set it to 80 pixels because that's what we have set in our styles for the navbar. So that way it'll start 80 pixels down. 